So this uh, uh, online presentation is an overview of uh, the phonological processes that uh, you will encounter uh, if you want to uh, might study uh, phonological data sets. Uh, we're going to start with the uh, assimilation processes and then uh, we're going to see uh, major class uh, changes and then uh, uh, processes that affect the uh, syllable structure and then uh, uh, processes uh, that uh, change uh, that processes that we call neutralization. Uh, we start and uh, Assimilation, uh, there are different types of assimilation uh, processes. Uh, we'll start with uh, as, uh, uh, assimilation uh, rules where uh, a constant assimilate vowel features. Uh, we're going to start with labialization, and uh, uh, labialization uh, is a process where uh, the consonant here in uh, Nupi, uh, West African languages, we noticed that that uh, velar g is labialized, is labialized here. Okay, you see the labialization is labialized when it is uh, when it is uh, uh, followed by uh, uh, round vowels or and the g is uh, palatalized when it is followed by the front e and a. Uh, we have a similar process of palatalization in Russian, where consonants uh, are palatalized, so r is palatalized when it is uh, followed by e. M when it is uh, by, uh, so dar, dar ye, ye, yet, dom yesko. The m is is palatalized. Uh, this in the sense that sense uh, takes the from the vowel, the plus around vowel is uh, ten is given to the consonant from the uh, surrounding vowel and the. Uh, palatal feature, that is the plus high feature, is taken from the uh, the following plus high vowel. Uh, uh, now we move on to another uh, time. It's the vowel that takes the feature, uh, phonetic feature from the consonant. Uh, previously, we have seen that it's the consonant that takes the feature on the vowel, now it's the vowel uh, that takes the feature from the consonant. And here we have an example of the uh, vowel nasalization as in English. In English, uh, when a vowel uh, uh, precedes a nasal consonant, it is uh, nasalized so that uh, the uh, nasal feature is given by uh, the consonant. It's the consonant that affects uh, the vowel, and we talk about vowel nasalization as an assimilation rule. Um, we have another type of uh, assimilation, uh, and here we have now consonant assimilating consonant features. Uh, we have the example here of uh, nasal assimilation in Yoruba, a West African language, where we have the uh, um, to derive uh, the continuous morpheme, like for example here, ba, the verb to hide. If you want to derive the continuous morpheme to uh, to talk about present tense continuous is hiding, that you add the this morpheme. Now this morpheme nasal will be different depending on the initial. Uh, consonant of of the of the verb. So sometimes this uh, 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 nasal morpheme of the continuous. Sometimes it is labial. Sometimes it is velar. 
uh, sorry, uh, uh, alveolar, and sometimes it is uh, velar. So we can say that it has uh, uh, allophones. If you're talking about, you know, uh, like this one would be the uh, the nasal uh, morpheme, and it has uh, four or uh, three allophones. The labial m occurs uh, occurs when we have a, a labial uh, sound in the beginning of the word, n when we have an alveolar sound, and the velar n when we have a velar uh, segment in the in the in the beginning of the word. So this is uh, an, right. We continue uh, uh, another assimilation. Uh, rule. An assimilation rule. Here we have vowels assimilating vowel features. Vowels assimilating vowel features. In German, we have a, uh, a process called umla, whereby back vowels are fronted before certain suffixes that come behind from a vowel. Uh, yeah, as you can see, uh, this U and O, these are the uh, vowels of the root, but when these vowels of the root, uh, you know, when we have suffixation of these uh, suffixes, they change into uh, front vowels. Uh, U becomes U and O becomes U. Uh, right? This is an example of uh, assimilation, uh, assimilation that comes from from this suffix vowel. The suffix vowel U uh, affects uh, the backness of the original vowel. Uh, the E changes the vowel into a front a front vowel. Uh, but the, it, it only changes the front vowel, the frontness. It, 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 the vowel keeps its roundness because these were originally round. They become round, but they only f change their backness. They become uh, front vowels. All right, so that's uh, an assimilation uh, rule in terms of uh, backness, and it's the vowel that affects another vowel. We have a, uh, another example of assimilation. Vowel assimilates another vowel, but this time we, we talk about uh, uh, vowel harmony, uh, vowel harmony in Yawilmani. Uh, if you look at the, uh, the, the these uh, words here, uh, and we have the suffix hin, and uh, in one and in two we have the suffix hun. What does this mean, the vowel harmony? Uh, what we mean by vowel harmony yeah. is that is that the, the vowel of the of the stem, the vowel of the stem, sorry the the vowel of the suffix harmonizes, assimilates with the vowel of the stem. Uh, you see here we have two uh, uh, two variants of of the of the of the morpheme. Uh, this morpheme probably means uh, the progress, the uh, present simple eats, so that uh, sir. In this language, it means hin, hin, hin. Uh, however, it has a variant with hun. When when do we have hun is when the vowel of the stem, the vowel of the word is plus around. So vowel harmony extends the plus around feature from one vowel, from one vowel. OK. Yeah. When, uh, but of course, th this is. Uh, uh, I guess that uh, the condition is that the vowel 
should be high. Uh, see here, O is round, but it is not plus high. So we don't have change into O. We only have a change into O when the vowel is plus high and uh, plus high and plus around. So plus high and plus around, then we have this change. Okay, that's, that's an example of vowel harmony. Now we move on to, uh, so, uh, so far uh, all these are assimilation rules uh, where uh, a vowel assimilates another vowel, a vowel assimilates to a consonant, and the, and the consonant assimilates to a vowel. Now we're going to see processes where we have the change of uh, the syllable structure, change of syllable structure where we have consonants and segments that might be deleted or inserted and so on. We start with consonant deletion. Consonant deletion is a process that is uh, uh, found in French. Uh, in French, um, uh, petit, petit ami, petit, petit ami, gros, uh, gros ami, trop étroit. All right. Uh, this p, z, and t, these consonants, are deleted when when the word starts the following word starts with a consonant so that you have petit garçon the petit petit is is deleted t is deleted z is deleted and p is deleted when uh, the word starts with a consonant consonant deletion in french in French, the final consonant of a word drops if the following word begins with another uh, consonant. Um, vowel deletion, again, in the same language in French. In French, the vowel of uh, the definite article le, garçon, fille, the, this uh, vowel, the schwa and the a, are deleted if the word starts with the vowel, le ami, l'ami is deleted, e is deleted, la, la arbre, l'arbre, a is deleted. Why do we have vowel deletion? We have vowel deletion uh, because we want, we don't want to have a sequence of two vowels. This language doesn't allow uh, the sequence of one vowel following another vowel. In French, the vowel of the definite article is deleted whenever the following word begins with another vowel in order to avoid a sequence of, of two vowels. Uh, consonant insertion or epenthesis. Um, in Hanunu, it's a language spoken in Philippines, in the Philippines. If you uh, consider here, uh, this upat means four, upati means make it four. Uh, we insert, uh, this is the morpheme E, morpheme E means make it. Okay. Uh, unum six, unumi makes it six. However, what you see here is we have the insertion of a he. Okay, insertion of a he because we have a sequence of two vowels, a, e. So this language doesn't allow. Uh, the sequence of two vowels, so we insert uh, the glottal h in order to break the sequence of a e. Usa, instead of saying usa e, we say usa e tuluhi. Consonant insertion or consonant epenthesis. The consonant h is inserted to break up a vowel uh, cluster or a sequence of, of two vowels. 
So that's consonant insertion and in parenthesis. We're going to see now uh, vowel insertion. In Moroccan Arabic, when we have a sequence of three consonants, like kdib, lab, ktib, sraq, the sequence is broken by the insertion of a shva, okay, to uh, break the sequence of, of three co consonantal cluster. So you see vowel uh, or consonant insertions are processes that help us break up either a consonant cluster or a vowel cluster uh, in a language. Uh, next process is called consonant coalescence. Consonant coalescence. Uh, coalescence is a process whereby we have two consonants when we have like, for example, in this language, we have a sequence of the V, K, and the B, and the H. They coalesce. Coalesce meaning they merge. They merge and they become one consonant. The sequence of K and the H becomes an aspirated K. The sequence of P and the H beca becomes uh, an aspirated P. Okay. This is coalescence or uh, the merge of two consonants. We can also consider uh, uh, the this coalescence has been a kind of assimilation. All right. Uh, it's if you want, we can consider this as assimilation and then deletion, deletion of a her k becomes aspirated when it is followed by uh, when it is when it precedes a her and then her is is deleted. Uh, the same thing, the same kind of coalescence uh, is uh, found during the development of from Latin to French. From Latin to French, uh, we have the, the Germanate uh, terra was degeminated into terre, bella, belle. Huta, hut, and pressa into press. Um, we consider when we have two identical consonants or two geminates, the two geminates, they coalesce, they merge into one single consonant. Uh, and we also talk about the process of uh, degemination. That is, a geminate becomes a single consonant. Again, you have different synonyms. You can talk about consonant coalescence. You can talk about also degemination as a process. Okay, and the, the contrary, that is the movement from single to, to geminate will be called uh, gemination. Gemination versus de degemination. Um, now we move on to vowel coalescence. Vowel coalescence is again, uh, we have two vowels, two vowels merging into one vowel. This is what happened in the development from, from Latin to French and Spanish. The, in Latin, the, uh, the sequence of uh, the two vowels or diphthong I becomes A in French and Spanish. I difficium becomes edifice, edificio. The, the sequence of two vowels become one vowel. Qualis, they merge into, into one vowel. The sequence au, causa, becomes, uh, the qualis merge into one single vowel, which is o, shows, and cosa. Same thing, pau, pere, becomes povre, Right, vowel coalescence, two uh, uh, diphthongs, uh, diphthongs become single vowels, so they, they merge a coalesce into a single vowel. We can also have. Yes, sir, the, 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 just explain uh, 
which was uh, not the same. Sorry. Sorry, I couldn't hear you. Can you repeat, please? For this example, in Latin, the sounds were the same. In Latin, in French and Spanish, in the three cases, they were O. Just the spelling was not the same. Uh, what spelling? It's not. Uh, we have different vowels. I. I is I is a diphthong, and this diphthong, which consists of uh, two vowels, I, au, they merge into one, one vowel, which is a. I becomes a, and au becomes o. Oh. What is your question? It was, uh, I thought uh, A and U, it was, uh, I thought it was O, not uh, O, for the Latin. Uh, no, this is uh, O, 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 yeah. Because I and you in French, it's the same as O. Even if the spelling is not the same, the pronunciation is the same. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if we have A, U, or the just O. Uh, but, but this is not uh, uh, I, this is not spelling. This is uh, a, if you want the pronunciation, uh, the pronunciation of the diphthong as I, and the pronunciation as A as pronunciation A, and here pronunciation O. Uh, o and O, and the pronunciation is AU. Right, so uh, these we're talking here about uh, IPA, if you want. AU, I, AU becomes A and O, respectively in Romans languages. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Um, we move on to uh, now coalescence of uh, vowel and consonants. Uh, the merging of, of, of a consonant and a vowel. Uh, in uh, French, uh, we have the coalescence of the vowel A and the nasal, the, the vowel O and the nasal, and uh, here. See, uh, whenever you have a sequence vowel plus nasal, and you have this vowel and nasal followed by a consonant, like z followed by a consonant, followed by d. And when it happens word finally, then they coalesce into a nasalized vowel. Dans becomes don and uh, fondamental become fondamental. Uh, however, uh, like ane, ane, and planet, although we have vowel plus nasal, uh, the it's, it doesn't nasalize because it is followed by a vowel. It is not followed by a consonant. The same thing here. It is followed by a vowel. It is not followed by a consonant. So whenever you have a vowel, and a consonant, a nasal consonant, they qualis, they merge into a nasalized vowel. Now, this process, we call it coalescence, but you can also consider it as, uh, as assimilation, as nasalization, all right? You can consider this as nasalization. We can consider this as a sequence of two processes. First process is nasalization, which is assimilation. And the second process is deletion of the N. Okay, so when we apply nasalization and then we apply deletion of N. Deletion of N here and deletion of N here. So A. In the review, you can do plus plus of the of the nasal. Right. Uh, next uh, process, phonological process, is what we call 
and a major class change. Major, what do we mean by major class? Uh, in, let's look at the data in French. In French, we have uh, the verb uh, uh, for play. When it is in the infinitive, it's jouer. And when it is in the present tense, il joue, joue, joue. il joue, ou, il joue, uh, he saws, il see, uh, he kills, il tue, u. And now we have here vowels. When uh, production of vowels, because they are stressed, uh, note that this is an indication of the stress. However, when the verb is in the infinitive, we add uh, er at the end. What happens is that this receives stress and uh, this one doesn't receive stress. And so when it doesn't receive stress, it is a glide. It is also in inverted into a glide. As if French admits to have a sequence or a cluster of two vowels, so the vowel is changed into the corresponding glide, into a labial glide. U is, a labial, uh, U is changed. E is changed into Y, and U is changed into Tue, Tue, and Tue. You, okay, these are glides. Why do we call them major class changes? Uh, because vowels are plus and glides are minus syllabic. So we have a major class from uh, from uh, syllabic segments into minus syllabic segments. Uh, uh, next rule is metathesis. Metathesis is when you change the, the order, the order or the sequence of segment. Uh, in this language, we have the word sa means one, a path. Means when you want to say once or one time or four times, that is if you, uh, we add, uh, what do we add here? That's the morpheme, ka is the morpheme for uh, times, four times. Ka, ka means times, four means a part. What, what happens? is that there is a metathesis instead of uh, pronouncing this as ka, ka, uh, sa, we pronounce it at ka, sa, all right? Uh, why do we have this uh, metathesis? Probably uh, because uh, uh, this language doesn't allow probably uh, the pronunciation of a glottal after a vowel. So we, we metasize the sequence. Um, uh, we have a, a rule that we call syncopy. Uh, syncopy is deletion of the vowel. We, we, we distinguish between syncopy and apocopy. Apocopy and syncopy are both deletion rules. Uh, syncopy is the deletion of the vowel inside the word, and apocopy is the deletion of the vowel at the end. Uh, let's start with syncopy. Uh, in the development from, from Latin into French, uh, the word for people means populum. It changes into purple. Table, tabula. Table, perdre or to lose, perdere, and tree, arborem, arbor. What happens is that this vowel here, 
the Latin vowel is deleted when when the when there is the development from Latin to French. Why do we have the syncope or the deletion of the vowel? Uh, it's because uh, in French, when the we have stress, uh, you see, um, we need to distinguish uh, between uh, uh, stress in Latin, which was uh, which falls on the antepenultimate syllable. Uh, what do we mean by antepenultimate syllable? It's the third syllable here. This is the final syllable. This is penultimate syllable and antepenultimate. All right. So words with antepenultimate stress, the penultimate vowel was dropped, was deleted. Right. So again, this is a so what have process. you said about uh, penultimate? Um, uh, in Latin, in Latin, uh, were penultimate, uh, antipenultimate, that is, uh, the stress falls not finally, not in the final, final means ultimate, not in the, uh, in the penultimate, that is the syllable before the end, but it's the third syllable before the end, we call it anti-penultimate stress. Right? Thank That's, you. Um, uh, anyway, this language, uh, French language, we have deletion of uh, the vowel that, uh, that occurs in the uh, penultimate syllable. Penultimate syllable meaning the syllable before the end is deleted. Syncopy and apocopy. Apocopy is the deletion of the a final vowel. Uh, in French, in formal French, normally we pronounce the word uh, always with the presence of a schwa. So that in formal French, when you say église, you say église, table, but in spoken English, uh, in spoken French or colloquial French, uh, in general, this uh, schwa is deleted. So we say now in colloquial French, église, table, and fee. So apocopy is the process of deleting a final vowel in the word. In vowel reduction is another process which uh, involves uh, the uh, reducing of a vowel, mostly the reducing of a vowel into a schwa. Uh, have a look at the, this data from English. Uh, in English, uh, able, able, Uh, when it is uh, an adjective, uh, A is a full vowel. However, when we derive the noun, ability, uh, A becomes a schwa. Uh, again, same thing, photograph. Photograph is pronounced photography when we uh, derive the noun, especially with the uh, with the suffix e, et or, for, or e for the noun. Uh, sober, o, as an adjective, when we derive the noun sobriety, again, the vowel that follows the su becomes a schwa. Right? So this is vowel reduction or the weakening uh, of a full vowel into a schwa. Now, wh wh what motivates this vowel reduction is simply that in English, when the vowel is, is not stressed, it becomes a schwa. In the adjective or in, in these words, they were stressed, so they were full, able, but when it is not stressed, the vowel is changed into a schwa. Vowel reduction. Uh, the last rule 
uh, that we're going to see is what we call neutralization. Uh, in German, this uh, data is taken from, from German. Um, you see here, uh, just study these uh, two words. Uh, bunt means colorful. In the attributive, uh, uh, bund means league. However, the same words, the same words, uh, league and and color for when they are in the predicative and nominative case. What happens is look at t and d. The t and d, there is a contrast between voiceless and voiced. This contrast is neutralized when t and d occur word finally. Okay? When t and d occur word finally, the d is voiced, is devoiced, so that there is a neutralization or there is a loss of contrast between t and the word finally. Okay, the same thing here happens. Uh, the word g, tag, tag. The contrast between g and k is neutralized when, when k and g occurs word finally. Yeah. Yes? I don't understand this process. You don't understand the process. Uh, okay, the, the process simply tells us that in a language we have a contrast between t and between d. Okay, Th these are phonemes. Okay, yeah. however, Look at bund. Bund. D is realized as voiceless. When it occurs, word finally. In this language, uh, we have a rule that the obstruents, the voice obstruents, they become voiceless when they occur word finally. Okay, B becomes p, z becomes s. Okay, so yeah, it yeah. means that it means that the contrast between between voiced z and voiceless s, between voiced b and voiceless p, between g as voiced and k, uh, the contrast is no longer uh, functioning when. Uh, these consonants occur word finally. All right. Th this is what we call there is neutralization. There is, if you want, loss of the contrast between voiced and voiceless consonants in the final position. However, when they occur uh, inside the word, we have the contrast. Okay. But yeah. word finally, we lose the contrast. We call this process neutralization. Oh, neutralization okay. of the contrast. Thank you, sir. Welcome. I guess, uh, yes, these we finished with the phonological processes. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I have, I, I will share with you this uh, presentation. And uh, I would like you to do this exercise for next week. Exercise one exercise two and exercise three for next week. Uh, and then we uh, correct these exercises for next week. And for next week, we also uh, look into how we formalize, how we formalize the rules using uh, formal uh, notation. Are there any questions?